Hello, welcome along to this week's edition of Off the Brawl on Off the Ball. Joined in the studio by Andy Lee and Kevin Byrne of the Irish Sun. A lot to get through, lads. Big show. But only one place to start. Belfast last Friday night. <laughs> Andy in the corner. Paddy, the real deal, Donovan. Yeah. Walking down to the ring, accompanied by Rod Stewart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it was suited him. It likes he was listening to that song all day. He had he had we had um, previously agreed to go to Dreams by the Cranberries. Yeah. You know we liked that limerick and everything. And then last minute he says, "Put this on." So, well, the fight against the choice, and it was, it was suited him. Yeah. It suited him. Yeah. It's nice and chill though. Yeah. And a uh, bit of sway in probably from the. The audience, you can sway along to Rod Stewart. Yeah, well, it was riven my heart, so that kind of it's got like a bit of a tri- tri- tribal yeah. kind of comes in easy, and then it kind of kicks in, and uh, it was good. Yeah, it was good. He did did really well, obviously, in the fight. Um, was what I expected of him. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I was glad. It was, it was some way it was a relief because I would built him up a lot, so it was good that he put on a good performance. Yeah, I'd say <clears> it's just a relief even to get it over with. Where mm. people probably saying, oh, when, "When's Paddy's debut?" and you know, for for both of you, just to it's it's done. Now. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. And yeah, he looks spectacular. You know, it's a very short fight, but that's what he like. When you're in there with somebody like his opponent was, like let's not get carried away. He was his opponent was very outmatched. You know, being in there with Paddy, he was, he was really a light welterweight. He wasn't a welterweight. You know, um, and and that's what you have to do when you're in there with somebody like that. You just get about them because the longer you let them survive, the worse you look. They'll make you look bad. So he did what he had to do. Yeah, and just looking at the the footage of the way in, mm. and you know you see him, you know he's looking in great shape, and you know when he was in here with us a few weeks ago, he had his shirt on, and we were talking about, you know, you're gonna have to, you know, gonna have to show your 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 body off now. But he that even just the image of him, like you can see why, you know, we obviously know he's got the credentials as a boxer, mm. but he's going to be so marketable. <coughs> yeah, and he made one forty seven. You know. He, he, um, I wanted him to do it and he wanted to do it to be actually at the championship weight even though he could have had a pound or two yeah. um, and they were quite flexible um, but he does he, he, but he yeah he looks the part he can fight and he's becoming more comfortable in terms of his media stuff um, he's very humble he's a, he's a pleasure he's a pleasure to work with yeah. how did you find the, the whole experience yourself? good yeah, everyone kept saying how, like it was my first time being yeah, the lead absolutely. in the corner so it was a lot of responsibility but I enjoyed it there was probably, I don't say no, probably a bit of nervous energy. I remember like I was jumping up and down at one stage in the back of the room or shadow boxing. But once we got out into the arena, I was very focused. And the people have watched the fight. You know, Paddy come out and he must have stood what felt like, felt like an age when he just stood in front of the, ho- you know, the, the kind of bo- hoarding or whatever yeah. they call it, you know. And he was just, but I told him like, when you step out there, soak it up, take it all in, look around you, um, breathe in the atmosphere. Be comfortable there, and when you're ready, then start walking, and then switch on and focus. And that's exactly what he done. But at one stage, he was just there. He was like this. I said, "Is he?" All right? I was thinking, "Like, is he all right here?" You know, as he yeah, froze yeah. a bit, as he froze. Then he started to bounce, and I thought, "Yeah, he's all, he's all right." Nice picture actually here. We can put up on the screen there. Look, mm, just it's a great to... photo. That's his dad on his on, on his right shoulder, and obviously Amy McGee, um, who it was great to have him. A nice. I guess a nice touch to have a former world champion Southpaw. Yeah, that's definitely a, that's a great photo. It's certainly mm. one to hold on to for the scrapbook, the start of the journey. Yeah, and uh, if anyone's going to have your back, you want the Terminator to have. Yeah, your back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think we'll use Eamon now whenever we're in Belfast. It's a great experience. He's just um, meant to be a great cut man, isn't he? Yeah, thankfully, and hopefully, we'll never have to use him. And that's that aspect. But just having his presence there, having him, his knowledge, and all of that. That's you were there, Kevin. Yeah, you know, mm. obviously the the Irish boxing journalists that would have been there will know all about Paddy. But was there a sense when he came into the arena that you know there was a bit of a buzz about the place? There was a buzz for I, I went in for the first fight and I, I walked in alongside Paddy Donovan's family, and you could get the buzz at the front door of the Ulster Hall. Like they were all going, they were all really excited yeah. up for the night, making loads of noise, making their presence felt, and uh, you could really feel like they're here. They're going to back their man. I was I was curious. Did did it, did Paddy? Watch any of the earlier fights, or did you just chill it back in the dressing room and we wait? We had it on a phone. Who did we watch? Um, watched a bit of was it McCrory? Did he fight in the undercard? No, no. McCrory. Who's the guy um, from Dublin? Oh, 
We watched one of the fights anyway. Gary Cully was on it. No, yeah, we didn't see him. We watched him since. Pierre um, Soleri was on it from Dublin. No, he was after Paddy. Um, a heavier guy. Oh, no, we actually watched Lewis Crocker. Crocker we watched Lewis right. Crocker's fight, and um, he did well. And then that was it. We just... just but Paddy, was, Paddy went to the venue earlier just to get a feel for it. I told him to go over, and he was in the ring and everything, so... Yeah. Um, I was curious if the big fight atmosphere is something he's used to. Like, obviously, every boxer has been at the national championships has been in, has been around the boxing game, you know, a hundred times, two hundred times, whatever. But he has as many fights as he probably has. But has he been to many pro occasions or? Has well, he been, yeah. Well, if this year, with me, he's been to a few. We were up in Mike Conlon's fight. We were at Billy Joe Saunders' fight in England um, when he fought in Stevenage. Mm. Um, Paddy, unlike me. He really embraces the attention, you know. <laughs> he does. Like, where I'd be, you know, trying just to, like, uh, take, I could take it or leave it, you know. And it's not always nice to be talk to people and blah, blah, photographs. But he kind of, not that he seeks it, but he kind of really like, enjoys that. So I think the more people who watch him or the more yeah. attention, the more he'll enjoy it, yeah. Like, he, he just was far too good for his opponent, as you'd imagine he will be as he comes up through the levels. I'm sure with Andy and the matchmakers at top rank, they match them quite well. Top rank do seem to match their guys difficult enough. They give they give them tests, give them different uh, obstacles to overcome. So it should be an interesting couple of years. From I heard uh, you saying on a podcast there, you're looking at maybe Paddy as a world title prospect in five six years. So there's no hurry. Yeah, and see where it's it goes. Just, so it's a difficult a one because it's and it's a real fine balance because he's young, mm. but he's so advanced. You know, so matching those things two, two things up together in terms of the level of opposition so you, you can't match him really well and then obviously drop back down you kind of have to keep a gradual in, improvement in terms of the opponents um, so it's it's, it, it's going to be not difficult but it's, it's going to have to be take a lot of consideration and time and just know and let him get the right amount of experience but also that he's improving against fighting against better fighters as well because you don't want him to be 22, 23 and then be there, you know, ready to challenge and not be, not have the seasoning yet or, or, or the experience or the maturity. So we have to, it's, it's going to be a delicate Talk job. Talk us through the stoppage. He, he was a bit anxious early on, it, like for the first 10 seconds, he was kind of, which was only understandable. You know, he was a bit up, up high with his punches or chased a little bit, punched when he shouldn't have punched. Um, but he settled into it quickly and... Uh, the, 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 he set the knock up, knockout up. He set it up with a body shot. He, he jabbed, jabbed, and he threw. Because uh, um, his opponent Lopez would always, we watched him. He would always shy to his right. When he, when you would attack him, he would kind of his defense was to put his hands up and go down to his right. So for Paddy being a southpaw, it was the left uppercut or the left hand would work. So Paddy set up, he jabbed, jab, left uppercut, step back, jab, jab, with the same rhythm. Instead of throwing the uppercut, turned it into a hook. And it caught uh, Lopez on the top of the head, and it was a hard footing punch. You were on that yeah. side of the ring. Yeah, he did. Yeah, like he yeah. he had to get oxygen afterwards, and yeah, he there's was always, taking, always a little bit of concern mm, when someone yeah, has to get oxygen. But he was, was taken just, to hospital as a precaution. Yeah, precautionary. Um, but he was fine the next day. How much would you have seen of him beforehand then? Because just a couple of videos. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't even watch the full fight. You know, just no, yeah, enough. you can look on on. Uh, look on YouTube and see these guys yeah it's a shame because he was supposed to fight a couple of decent opponents and within the la in the last four days we had three different guys you know which is common at this level mm. um, so when they put Lopez up offered him to us it was not I would have liked him to have a bit more of a sterling test mm. but it was like a day before the fight so we were just kind of take him you know what I mean yeah he was coming over with that crew of you know the the, all the opponents seem to be S South Americans or Central Americans fighting out of Spain, and yeah. there seems to be a whole. There, there's no shortage of welterweights in mm. in boxing. That's one thing you're not going to really run out of anytime soon. He's so. going to fight um, Danny Mendoza, who fought Gary Cully okay. in Belfast. Um, I think they went the distance. I think it was six or eight this, rounds. Uh, just yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. So he's going. Paddy's going to fight him next. He's a bit, bit more. When are we looking at that? Yeah. November sixteenth in Glasgow. 16th. Yeah. And you, do you think maybe after that, then another? Another one before Christmas? If we can, yeah. it would be ideal. But we'll see. It's getting tight. You know, shows are pretty booked up. Yeah. And then he'll fight again, at hopefully early in the new year. And then, which we hope to do, will be Conlon's on the card at St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. All going well. Yeah, we'll actually, we'll, we'll talk about Conlon in a bit. Because I think we'll save it maybe when we're talking about Warrington. Just that they're all kind of 
in that same bracket. I know, obviously, Michael would have been in Belfast just to watch Paddy Barnes' third pro defeat. You know what? What? What's left for him? I don't know. It's 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 a difficult. Like I bumped into Paddy after the fights, yeah. um, out on the street, and I didn't know what. Didn't really know what to say to him in terms of, um, you know, what you say. Like, where do you go from here? Like, yeah. I knew that was going to be a hard fight for him. That that guy Jay Harris is fresh, and he's bubbly, and he's full of full of life. You know, um, but. Whatever, like, I'm not rubbing it, right? Like, you know, you're not, it's not an obituary, but whatever Paddy decides to do, you have to take into consideration what he has done so far. The fact that he's challenged all these guys, put it like, and he goes down fighting, he get, fights with his heart, and like, he's Ireland's most successful Olympian, two time Olympic medalist, three time Olympian, um, and. He definitely went down with a, with a fight. Yeah, in he those went four rounds, it was a hard. It was a hard. Rounds, probably threw five or six hundred punches. He it tried his best. Like, as well, <coughs> but he just needs to avoid getting hit in the body, and you can't. It's like you always say, you can't get in the water without getting. But he cannot mm. go into a fight without He's, getting hit in the body. And all of his after the fight, I've got no body. I've got no body, and it was, it was almost like, what do I do? Like, yeah, surely there has to be some way of addressing that. I don't know. Like, yeah, like I was talk, just talking to him afterwards. Made a joke about. Barbecue spare ribs on him, you know, and there's you can't uh, he can't seem to get punched to the body, and there's you can't really put muscles if you're trying to make flyweight or even yeah. light flyweight. He's not made I don't know arms. how he's going to do it, and maybe he should just get checked out and maybe see if he's got some lingering rib injury that we don't know about or something. Because I think he was saying before his last fight at the failure, the, the fight he's won in this loss in this uh, loss record of three and four, but he's won one in the middle in, in the failure in Belfast, and he said when he was geeing himself up before the fight, he was you know doing this like hitting himself in the body. And he nearly knocked himself out, and he was probably just half joking. But I don't think everybody in the crowd kind of was willing him on, hoping he'd win. But most people who watch boxing knew that he's going to be stopped by a body shot, and yeah. he wasn't. It was a, it was a head shot. I think that put him down in the end. But the damage was done through a body shot, so it was sad to see him. It is because come it over like you touched on it there. You've got this unbelievable amateur boxer, mm. and I don't know why he had to go. Why I know it was his probably he was the driving force being stepped so fast and having a no, world title fight very early in your career and even like he had he had the loss against for the world title fight came back and then he was put in with a, with a like with a bantamweight maybe super bantamweight in America got yeah. beat again yeah then he comes back he gets the win it and then he's put in again tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is that him though? Is that I don't maybe know. even the lads that are around him, Kevin, where Sometimes he's looking you have to at say, like, some come of his, on. his mates and they're all you know, far more know. advanced in their so, some of it didn't make any sense. I get fighting for the WBC WBC title at Windsor Park. He was winning the fight. He was looking to make yeah. a record, be Ireland's fastest ever world champion, be Katie Taylor, I think he was the fastest. He was looking to do great things and he, he wanted to skip all of domestic level when he turned pro. Yeah. And fair play, it's inadvisable if you want to have a career of longevity and all that. But Paddy wanted to make records and uh, he attempted to and he nearly did. But then for his bounce back fight in uh, in, in America, I think it was in March, he, uh, Patrick's Day, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and he wanted to get on that Conlon card. He was desperate to get on the Conlon card. And I heard an interview afterwards with his, uh, his trainer, Danny Vaughan, and he said, I didn't want him to fight that opponent. I didn't think he should have. But Paddy, being Paddy, is headstrong, and he, he wanted to, and he insisted he did. And maybe top rank had high expectations. If you want to fight on this card, you have to fight who we, have, who we say. And Paddy, obviously, the way he, his attitude is, is, yeah, I'll kill him, I'll kill anyone. But if his own trainer is saying, you shouldn't be taking this fight, it kind of... Maybe Paddy's in control of his own destiny. This was his first fight back, you'd nearly say, at domestic level against Jay Harris. I think Jay Harris used to train with Jamie Conlon and uh, Jamie Conlon had the better of him and Spars was putting him down. So maybe there was some internal confidence that this is a fight that Paddy can win. But once you step back to domestic level, yeah. you know, if you lose so early at, at world level, where do you go? So Paddy maybe has to re reset, goes back to domestic level and gets stopped there. It's then you're really left with very few options. Yeah, like if he was to call it a day now, there hasn't been enough damage done in his pro career. People will still remember. Of course, yeah. yeah. You know, he's always going to be remembered yeah. for those, for damages. And also fighting as he has fought as a pro and t and challenging himself, not, you know, building up a record yeah, against... No padding or yeah. anything, yeah. But um, it's just difficult. Diff it's 
it's really for him, you know, it's, it's hard, it must be hard to see which where he goes and what he does now. You know, I don't, I don't know what. You look to his left, his best friend Michael Conlon is on the way to being a superstar, being a multi multi millionaire. On his right, his other best friend Carl Frampton has achieved that and looks like he's going to have more big fights as well. So, you know, he, he's looking at it. He's looking at his best mates conquering the world of professional boxing and, and wants a piece of it. But I guess he's going to have to look to the future. Like he's got so much to give back to Irish amateur boxing. He's a hero to young kids coming up. I'm sure if you ask Paddy Donovan, what do you think of Paddy Bar? You know, he's a he's a hero to these kids. Yeah. And you just hope there was a pathway then for these high performance athletes. Like Paddy Barnes is in the conversation as Ireland's most successful amateur of all time. And you know, there's other people with that would have their hand up in that argument. But there should be now a pathway for guys like that to give their experience back uh, to the, the stars of tomorrow, or whatever. And it doesn't really appear to be uh, in Ireland at the minute. Like like Andy, you're training pro boxers. Like Kenny Egan's training pro boxers. Uh, and other other notable graduates at a high performance unit like Darren O'Neill, Eric Donovan, there just doesn't appear to be this pathway back for the mm. maybe the people who've learned everything they learned a lot from Zorantia and how to win major medals. And you know th- there really should be a pathway there for someone like if Paddy Barnes can't get a job with it, you'd wonder who can. Yeah. Cause is it a case that because Zor is there, like if you were bringing in someone else, that they're the succession plan or? I don't know, Andy, maybe you could answer this more. Like, What kind of opportunities would there be for... It's difficult it's just, because... It's just too... Like, the, the workforce, it's, it's just... It's a small It's a small, small team. Yeah. How, how many can they be? So, obviously, Zor is there. He has a couple of assistants, Dima, obviously, John, John Conlon. Yeah. And they work well together. Um, oh, yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, of yeah, course, they're, yeah. They're, 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 they're exceptional, and, yeah. Um, but there isn't, like, you know, there's not, there's not really the opportunities there, is there? You know, there's not... If it's, the thing is with the I, IABA is if that if they're going to give a job they'll give it to one of their servants yeah. they won't give it to somebody they'll give it to somebody who's been involved in the club in a club yeah. clubs like scenario with a boxer with, or with a club who've been successful and they'll kind of go back into the community and that's probably the right way but even um, instead of thinking about though like full time paid positions with pensions and holidays and all that sort of job all that sort of stuff you'd you'd hope there is an opportunity for at least on a every couple of months or whatever for someone like Paddy to meet the 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds and talk to them about the obstacles they're going to come across, the pitfalls, you know, what it's like to win these medals at major championships and the dedication it takes. I remember Paddy saying to me years ago that while well, some teammates like Darren O'Neill were getting, you know, degree after degree, Paddy said, well, I wouldn't have won the medals I won if I was doing that. So there's loads of different obstacles for young boxers coming through who want to be the next Andy Lee or Paddy Donovan or whatever. So everybody who's been successful has, you know, something to give back. And I just... Paddy in particular, because the absolute success he's had, European champion, two Olympic medals, Commonwealth champion, he's done, done everything there can be done in, in amateur boxing. Yeah, it so. would seem like a really good decision to tap into that and what made him yeah. so successful. And look, we wish him the best. We don't know what's going to happen in the future in terms of his pro career. Tommy McCarthy won over the weekend. Mm. I was watching this fight, he won in Italy, and this is a guy that has linked up with Pete Taylor. And Pete Taylor... Like we knew he was a good trainer, but you've seen the transformation in Luke Keeler, and this is McCarthy's biggest win, went to Italy. And it was strange watching this fight because the open scoring coming in after round four, round eight, and it was tight. But to get the decision over in Italy against an Italian called Turkey, <laughs> yeah. it was great, great to see him. Like that, it, it was funny watching the fight where first round Turkey, you could see the authority he came out with. Then the second round, he caught McCarthy with a few nice shots. It almost woke him up. McCarthy realised, yeah, I need to hit back here. And from then on, especially the, the second half of the fight, he was he was exceptional. Mm. Turkey got a bad cut and McCarthy kind of jumped on that. And it's, it is his career best win and best performance. And he needed it. I've, said, I've only seen the highlights of it, but it like, looked like he gutted it out and dug deep. Yeah. Um, but he needed that win because... If he had lost at that again, we would be talking about where does he go? But, yeah, um, it's fantastic. He's reju like you know now he's not re- yeah he's rejuvenated his career and he's got people interested in him and it's a big win a- abroad on the zone you know in Italy it's a big win. Yeah, like he's he's in a great place at the minute. Yeah. He uh, decided to take action this year to resuscitate his career. People were probably losing interest. I mean, Tommy was. Uh, McCarthy in the amateurs was one of those guys who could knock out fellow amateurs with the big pillow gloves and you wouldn't, re- you wouldn't usually see it 
and I saw him flatten a few guys and really was excited about his pro career. It's flattered to deceive, but now he seems to... Yeah, he could be... You never know. Like He could lose his next fight, but yeah. at least... Um, He's shown that he's he's willing to learn, willing to take hard decisions. Like he's training in Dublin now, but he still lives in Belfast. He's a father of four children, uh, so he's really taking it seriously. And I I really like how he he nearly used social media to hook up with Pete Taylor. He was watching like most boxing fans would watch the other Irish lads in action. And Tommy McCarthy was tweeting about Luke Keeler a lot and watching his progress and almost scratching his head. How is this guy the most improved Irish fighter out there? So I think the two of them talked and Luke Keeler said, come train with us in Dublin with Pete Taylor. So he's only there for one camp and he's pulled off the biggest win of his career. So it's... You know, it's it was even interesting like, watching the fight because it wasn't a raucous atmosphere so you could actually hear Pete's instructions. He's talking him through it and you'd imagine he's just going to get better the more he works with him. It seems that way. He's, he's been a great stable of fighters, yeah. Peter Taylor, hasn't he? I think he only lost his... I'm not, I'm not sure I'm open to correction, but I think... David Oliver Joyce last week was his first probably defeat as a pro trainer, oh. or maybe maybe he's in the corner for one of Sean Sean Turner's losses now that I'm, now that I think of it. But uh, Sean Turner since moved on, but yeah, he seems to be able to well improve his fighters. They're they're fit. That should be a given, but it's not always. Uh, they have a game plan which they follow through because they're fit enough usually to stick to it, and uh, they're determined and focused. They're well prepared fighters, and uh, he's pulling off good wins. Luke Keeler looks like he's going to fight for a world title in his, his next fight. Android. Yeah. yeah. He, fight, he fights actually in November. Well, I'm not sure if they've changed it, but he was down to fight in November. Yeah, 16th. in Glasgow. Yeah, and the, yeah. yeah, but if he gets his world title fight, that It'll could probably it, yeah. go, or maybe get him a handier opponent or something like that. But Another one that was on over the weekend, Alexander Usyk, his heavyweight debut. Not the one we were expecting because obviously uh, Tyrone Spong um, was a naughty boy. So mm. Chaz Witherspoon rocks into the place and mm. uh, he's, he was. Uh, a career heaviest, so we didn't learn much from from Usyk. Uh, you know, when you watch him fight, he he tends to like uh, Lomachenko, just use the first round to suss it all out. And uh, but did you see anything from him in terms of his movement? Did you think he looked slow or no? <laughs> like slower. Typical typical performance for him, but obviously such a high level skill level and concentration and able to sustain it and it was a beat down you know it was a beat down it was a methodical kind of um death by a thousand cuts or something you know he just he boxed well and i really like liked his lead hand how he was jabbing chas witherspoon was tough 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 old campaigner yeah. i would have I known him but he was in a few klitschko camps um so i would have been around him sometime and he's a tough old guy you know with an Emily with spoon. He is a know, relation. Yeah, he has a relation yeah. with Tim. Came to fight, but outgunned, not really in condition. And um I I think yeah, I dunno, did you think any did you see any anything else there? I didn't really see like he he, he wasn't electric, he wasn't he wasn't he's not Deontay Wilder, like he's not gonna yeah. knock him out with one punch. Uh maybe he was better better able to be faster and more oppressive. I, th I think he'll probably fight maybe to his level. So you put him into the, you put him in with the best heavyweight in the world, and you'll really see him tested, and you'll really see him up it. But I can't really have too many problems with early stoppage of the biggest guy he's fought since the amateurs. Like mm. I think he fought and a late, Joyce. Mm, yeah. and a late, yeah. a late yeah. change. You know, and the pace was fully like Ukrainians. It's his heavyweight debut. It was under pressure yeah, to impress. Yeah. Chicago is not yeah. a big like. It, they don't really sell well in Chicago. I like even like I fought there. I've seen when Mike Conlon fought there. It wasn't sold out. Mm. You know. That was Bob impressive Aram to have say, Bob Arum say about Chicago. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what do we expect <laughs> too from Usyk? Because obviously he's cleaned up the cruiserweight division, and he'll challenge. He'll yeah. challenge one of the heavyweights. Um, one of the big three, and he has a chance against them all. I think. I think except some all except Fury. Yeah. probably. Would you, the thing when I see Wilder fight, you could outbox Wilder for twelve yeah. rounds, and then he just lands that right yeah. hand. And yeah. Like Wilder's fought a sim like not a lot less a class that that Spicker, who's a southpaw, similar height, probably was a cruiserweight but fighting a heavyweight, and he was getting outboxed, but then Wilder flattened him, yeah, really bad. But y Usyk has a lot more nous than that, and t to actually catch him clean, especially with one of those big wind-up punches, it might be hard. I, I think. I think you. I remember you fought a big puncher, Peter Quillen, and I was talking to Quillen after the fight, and Quillen didn't 
throw many punches for the second half of the fight. He'd inflicted a lot of damage in the first round and he'd, first few rounds he he you know put it on you hard. And then I think you knocked him down to seven round and I was asking him like you know what, what was the story? What was your second half game? Second half of the fight game plan or whatever. And he just he couldn't he couldn't uh, commit to throwing the punches because he was getting tagged when he did and he made it, he made himself shot shy because he was second guessing mm-hmm. everything he did and I think Usyk will do that to the big big punch in heavyweights I think he'll do it to Joshua and Wilder I think he can do it too but obviously Wilder like Fury did it to Wilder but Wilder still had the power in the twelfth round to detonate that bomb so I think Usyk will be able to do it to them guys but whether or not he can maintain that for twelve rounds against Wilder but I think he can maybe against Joshua. And That's the thing, when you're fighting guys who are heavier than you're physically bigger, it takes a lot of energy, it's very draining, and can he do it? You know, Wilder, not massive though, is he? Like, Usyk is going to probably fight around 16 he's stone. He's consistently yeah. getting smaller. Yeah. You know, he's consistently getting smaller in terms of his weights. Yeah. He was 130, 213 for Fury, it's basically 13 pounds over cruiserweight. Like. The beauty as well of Usyk is, because he's in with Matchroom, he's fought Bellew in the UK, he could be on a big show in the UK because we, him, we're and, him and Joshua is a huge fight in oh, the UK massive. Yeah. I suppose that really depends on what happens between Ruiz it's and the biggest Joshua. fight of the century <laughs> <laughs> in the Middle East yeah but he like we've seen that seems to be the way boxing is going now Kevin where it's not just hometown fighters that Lomachenko and Campbell obviously fought in the UK but we talked about this when it happened. If it wasn't Campbell and it was somebody from outside the UK, Lomachenko still probably would have sold out the O2 in London. Probably. There's something about those Ukrainians that yeah. have captured the imagination of five fans. Those um, two guys, especially. They haven't yeah. necessarily transcended boxing, but boxing has a big and a growing support, I'd yeah. say. And Lomachenko and Usyk are right at the top of the food chain with boxing fans. Mm. Uh, so they, don't, they don't say much. Like they don't, they don't enough, smack. It's they're, facial expressions. Yeah, they don't smack. Skill, they just let their fists. Yeah, we're it's just those training videos, yeah. social media. It's dancing. things like that. Yeah, I'm sick of the dancing now. <laughs> I don't want to see any more videos of Middle Eastern fighters, or Middle or Eastern European fighters dancing. No, well, it's not. It doesn't make you. Oh, look at him. He's so. He's such a character. Oh, he's so colourful. Great feet, Oh, look at this. He's just doing a silly dance. Who cares? Don't get like that's not. Get that off my off my social feed. I don't want to see that stuff anymore. Just don't follow them, Andy. <laughs> no, I don't. But they get retweeted. <laughs> right. Like everyone's buzzing out the training. Yeah. Everyone probably wants to feel good and do it. Like, but it doesn't make like you have to, like just to show you don't have to do a whole lot to be considered the character in boxing. Like, oh look at him, isn't he such a character? Oh, just because he's doing a silly dance. Yeah. Just keep knocking people out. But get that out. That's, I want to get that off my chest. It's okay. It's okay. We're here for that. TJ Donny was on the undercards back in business. Good stoppage win against Jesus Martinez. Once the rematch with Daniel Roman, who was obviously meant to fight recently enough, but had to postpone it. But it seems like TJ will bide his time get, to get another crack at Daniel Roman, but probably just good to get back in. And yeah, it went under the radar, didn't it? There wasn't much yeah. about it. Kind of just it all of a sudden. He announced, well. it, he announced yeah. the fight week as well. It was yeah. just getting back in. He obviously. There's no fanfare with TJ Donahue whatsoever. He's not interested in any of the bluster. Doesn't even want to do interviews before his fights. Just wants to get in and be spiteful. And it was a really good performance as well. Like you'd often see those sort of fights, you know, late late announcements. You see that going the full distance. Yeah. But he wasn't having it. No, game. no, he's game. game. Like you think back to that fight against Roman, and you know he, he he was so close to finishing it. So you can see why he wants another crack at it. But if that doesn't happen, is there what are the other options for him? You tell me. Like I mean, um, just I think he has to go for Roman. But there's other there's other guys like Vargas out there. There's maybe there's fights at featherweight. Yeah. He looks like he could. He's he right in like the mix of those guys, okay. especially being with MTK. You know, if he could get a title, him and Conor at featherweight, super, you know, super bantam would be nice. You know, Ryan that, that, Burnett. Ryan Burnett is Burnett there. needs a dance partner. Like it's yeah. And I'm not sure what his future holds at the minute. Like he. Hasn't been as active as I thought he might be when he made the comeback from injury. But there's, a, I suppose, there's potential of fighting the winner of the Golden Contract Tournament or anything like that. Like so, He's in the mix with all of yeah. those guys. You know, if, uh, yeah, I think yeah, I'd like to st- I wouldn't like to see him maybe moving up to Federate because he has advantages mm. at Super Bantamweight. It um, looks like he, he, he's, he works hard. Not works hard, but he's very disciplined and strict to make oh, it, yeah. making the su- su- Super Bantamweight. And it kind of, su- like I said, it suits him mm. being that bigger man in there. Because we saw what happened, like when, you know, when Frampton stopped knocking people out when he went up to 
featherweight and you know packed on a bit more muscle and he's going up to super featherweight now but if you can make the if you can make the weight at the age or I think TJ Donny is 32 or something so if you can if you can make the weight and it takes hard work stay where you're stay where you're good and stay where you're hurting people yeah that's it. here's the the power okay let's bring in the the kind of Conlon Frampton and uh, Warrington triangle I, I I don't even know if they if they should be in that just yet. But mm-hmm. we obviously know Conlon, it's happening again, the Vladimir Nikitin fight, it was uh, confirmed. So it's going to be on the in December. When did I when 14th. 14th of December in Madison Square Garden. So we talked about this when the fight was originally penciled in for August in Belfast. It's a fight we know he can win, should win. But... Bob Aram has said it as well. It's just one that he wants. He just—it must be a closure. I thing. don't know even if he wants it that much now, but I think it's that the Americans want it in terms of it's a good narrative, and as an undercard fight, it's—it brings a little extra spice to it, doesn't it? You know, yeah. it brings a little bit of an extra. And you want to draw a line story. under it. You want to stop being asked about it as yeah. well because they're still top rank are still trying to introduce Michael Connolly like to the hearts and minds of America. They've invested big in him. They're giving him big slots, but. It, his part of his narrative is still the, the 2016 Olympics, yeah. and it won't become anything else until he. Yeah, puts they'll that always be able him. to draw on that. You know, yeah. it, looking back and referencing referencing it that you can this was a great it. injustice, yeah. and now yeah. the promo like will sell itself. Yeah, and you know they'll yeah. do a, a brilliant promo where yeah. they'll have the footage of his interview and flipping the the bird and all that. Yeah. And then we can kind of maybe finally stop showing that. Yeah. And I think once he's moved past Nicotin, they can up the ante in terms of opponents, move towards genuine world title contention because Michael Conlon's r- ranked quite highly and he could yeah. nearly step in now as a as a world title challenger. But I'm not sure developmental he's ready for that. I think he needs a couple of harder fights to be really tested before he should be fighting for a world title. So are we thinking a year? Well, here we are now in October, maybe even next December. Yeah, I think if he gets his... Gets a good win against Nikitin. He's obviously he'll be out in St Patrick's Day Fight as well. March, a mm. bit of a step up there, and they're going to do that failure again next year. Open yeah, air, it's already it could be planned. Then. We'll see. Like, yeah, that's already being planned. So, he's got a nice little schedule. Josh Warrington. Josh Warrington obviously won at the mm. weekend. Um, you know, it was a fairly comfortable win against Takut, and said afterwards. I don't know. Yeah, he said his message for his big following, which are you know that Leeds base that he has. Get your passports ready for 2020 because we're going to go travelling. Mm. Um, now we don't know how far he's going to go, but then again, <laughs> Belfast. Belfast. <laughs> Do you need that your passport? Could, that could be tough yeah, for Brexit. Now, hits with Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I don't know if that's that's the route that'll happen. I don't know. Do you? I don't know. The only thing about it is there's the BT thing there. Yeah. The fight on BT. I'd like to see him maybe if he, if he can maybe and I just made this up now on the spot. But uh, yeah. if you're looking at Fury against Wilder two in February the twenty third or something like that, maybe BT can pull a few strings, get him to Las Vegas, get his fans out there. They, like Wilder Fury one didn't sell many tickets I'm sure the second one will do a lot better Yeah. but maybe get him on the undercard of that Conlon fights in March uh, and Warrington's going to want to fight open air next next summer at Eldon Road maybe Conlon can step in then but maybe it's just a bit too early even next summer yeah. and maybe leave that fight but it, it is a stadium fight when it occurs because uh, Josh Warrington can do a stadium in Leeds Michael Conlon can do a stadium in yeah. Belfast so it kind of sounds like Frampton Warrington rematch is not going to happen it seems like they're they have different ideas Mm. I don't know as much yeah it looks like it's not but it, like I think there actually is a warrant and there's a a rematch could be warranted you know because yeah. that, that fight was so close from being one way or the other that first yeah. two rounds was decided the fight um, where do we stand on Warrington now because going into the Selby fight I think he's I think he's a very hard fight and yeah. I think he's He's, dead. he's probably one, he's one of the best in the division at featherweight it's not he's really know. good yeah and it's a pity featherweight has been vacated by a bunch of the biggest names because mm. I would have lo- liked to have seen him like, against the Santa mm. Cruz I imagine what that would be some fight yeah. Yeah. who yeah. actually Valdez is on gone. the, yeah. the Condon card the, as well um, like if Lomachenko steps down to featherweight that would be an interesting fight it would be an interesting fight Lomachenko just, against uh, Warrington yeah just because of the engine Warrington has the style he has Obviously, you'd have to favour Lomachenko, but in terms of what's out there now to give him a challenge and something that he hasn't seen in terms of that, the way Warrington moves, and then he he, he kind of raids, but he's like... What about his power? Because we didn't think he had power. Mm, no, I think he's a strong puncher, and he's a good trader in terms of that he gets his head low and he'll trade it like his. Yeah, and Frampton said he's never been hit as hard yeah, as that's, he was I hit think, by Josh Warrington. I think that when those were the comments where people took notice because... 
you know, he had gone the distance. The thing so is many with times. him, he, he, he's so wild. Yeah. He's he's always likely to hit his opponents on the top of the head or behind the ear because he is wild. You know, it's um, those are the ones that hurt. And I think that's what caught Frampton. It was kind of high on the head. Yeah, wasn't I it mean, it could have like at one stage watching that fight, you thought it was going to end and I, early. I think Frampton's been very unfortunate in terms of what's happened since then. Obviously, he had a cancellation in August, dilly dallying, and I don't buy into the thing that he's. You know, I think um, kind of maybe mentally in terms of his hunger or but in terms of physically where he's at as a fighter he's, he's still at the top he's still at the top to me yeah he's still at the top and what he can do in the ring physically um, um, but obviously the longer your career goes time away from the ring you kind of lose yeah. that kind of Euro mentality yeah you is, lose that mentality yeah, and other things become a priority in your life you're not as hungry and you don't, you've already achieved so much but t- if he can find that fire again but he's back in on the 30th, sorry, I correct myself. November, yeah. Yeah, of November. Valdez is on that card. At the Cosmopolitan, where yeah. you won the world title, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so lovely. So he's obviously taken on Tyler McCreary. And then you've got Valdez on that card against fellow Mexican. Gutierrez. Yeah, so just keep Gutierrez out of the shower. Yeah, I think John Denon from Boxing News did a poll. What's going to kibosh a fight? Is it a shower injury or an ornament injury? Because both <laughs> of them are fighting on the same card. Yeah, so but, uh, a few, a few uh, ornaments around the Cosmopolitan. But Valdez right? is a, he's a, another fighter where you want to see him in against the best lads as well. Uh, the Conlon card as well. Two fights on that, like Terence Crawford's on that as well. But the Comey and Teofimo Lopez fight. It's an interesting That's the fight. one. Yeah. I saw that Conlon was fighting the Keaton, but I saw Comey and Lopez. Because we've talked about Lopez before, where you know he's got an attitude, he uh, he talks a good game. So we're going to see what he's made of. Exactly. This is the, You're looking this forward is, to this, aren't this you? He has to test. Comey is good. Like, you know, he's, he fell short, but I think he was robbed in his first, first attempt at the world title. Um, but then he, he has since won it, and he he'll give a, he he'll test you. Yeah, he'll test what you're really made of, and we'll find out if Lopez is the real deal. Yeah, I hope he wins because we need a few kind of stars at that weight, big punching mm. stars. Lom- Lomachenko, Lo- Lopez challenges. Yeah, 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 yeah and definitely. Like I mean, it'd be great to see Mikey Garcia getting back active as well, back down around those weights because we need challenges for Lomachenko and like. People will say, oh, but also big names for Conlon to, to face yeah. as well. You know, just I haven't not- even mentioned Shakur Stevenson. Yeah, he's no, fighting yeah, yeah. in a few weeks, and he's another name that Gary could be, Russell Jr. Yeah, like but he, as uh, Warrington said last week after his win, he said he only fights once a year. Yeah. I think but. if um, I think if Frampton and Warrington, the second one is supposed to happen, I get the sense from Frampton because he's on the kind of wind down of his career. He's only got a couple of fights left. He's spoken about it a few times. He wants to become the first Irish fighter to win world titles at three weights, and I think Warrington will probably need to maybe go up a division if Frampton can maybe take a world title might defend or unify or whatever against against Warrington up at super featherweight but there's a lot of there's a load of ifs and buts yeah. on the way to that like so yeah. Stevenson yeah could upset them all he's yeah really, absolutely really good, and another fight as well because I know we're, we're kind of running out of time here Dennis Hogan we had him in not long after he lost to Mungia and I'll tell you after spending a few minutes with him in the studio I just I thought I could rule the world is positivity so he's uh, he's going to be up against Charlo on the 7th of December in Brooklyn at middleweight yeah yeah. he was kind of said it about the light middleweights shame on you all for, for ducking and dodging out, out of this fight but do you know what after watching him against Mungia uh, you know you, you have that genuine belief that he's going to he's going to turn up and he's going to put on a performance whether it's good enough or not yeah well uh, this Hogan 2.0 this current version we're seeing now is a difficult fight for anyone Charlo can punch like hell so it's going to be a difficult long night if he's to be first yeah. and we kind of thought that about Mungia that he'd well, yeah. be too yeah. powerful uh, what uh, Dennis has shown that he can fight to a game plan Yeah, uh, his coach is an interesting guy he's a former like martial arts guy um, they had a good game plan with Jeff Horn for Pacquiao yeah. and now it seems like and, and certainly with, with Hogan and Mungia so now like he's a live dog He's a, yeah. but he's, a, he's a dog but he's a big live dog you know but like you say like he, he's got that game plan but mm. he's supremely fit he appears yeah. to be yeah. incredibly fit and you need to you need to have that conditioning to follow the game plan for 12 rounds so definitely a live dog and he, like from what he and it's definitely what he faced in Mexico in terms of the hostile ho, you know the hostility of the crowd yeah. Some of the little it's going to be it's yeah. going to be different it's going to yeah. be different like it's going to be night and day compared to what he's going to face in in, in in Brooklyn um but but it, 
re- like a just reward for him because yeah. he I personally don't think he won the fight I thought a draw could have been like you know yeah. so round a flip of a coin he might have won the fight it's a robbery yeah <laughs> yeah I don't think it was a sh- robbery Robbery's, being away from home yeah. being against a champion all of that things taken into consideration he probably won the fight if it's on the neutral ground yeah but um, it wasn't uh, unfortunately yeah. like to win um, and he's going to have to face that again and yeah. so maybe that experience in Mexico will stand to him yeah I definitely thought he Charlo was fight Charlo against. hasn't been great li- lately you know those guys have kind of plateaued yeah. both of them you think he won? I think he won against mm-hmm. Mungie, yeah. Um, he won the fight, but do you think he yeah. won it being in Mexico against the hometown fighter on his, on his away promotion and all yeah, that? Yeah, no, I understand. I understand why he didn't. I understand how some of the close rounds that were subjective could go to Mungie, but I thought he, Mungie looked terrible, and maybe yeah. he was struggling with the weight, but I think more so he struggled with the game plan and the confidence that Hogan brought, and the activity or just just played into mm-hmm. Hogan's hands for the, for the fight. Now, he... he you know, take it out of the judge's hands if you want to avoid that sort of uh, a thing. But yeah, I, I see. I see. Interesting. For, yeah. inter- really yeah. interesting. Now, there's fight. so many good fights mm-hmm. to look forward to. It's always that Carabao will fight Chris Eubank Jr. on the undercard on that night. Yeah. So that'd be a good little scrap. Carabao fight, eh? <laughs> yeah. Have to go support him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I still I say to Sandy, I still think eventually Eubank Jr. is going to be around long enough that eventually he'll win a world title. But he'll just. He won that IBO, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it just it seems we are we are kind of entering that time of the year where you've talked about it before, where fighters like to get that payday before Christmas, and there's so many good fights. Is there anything else before we go? That Fury in the WWE. What yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> His profile is just going to go through the roof. Apparently, yeah. It, I see that Bob Aaron was saying that you know there was no money Mayweather until he did the WWE. Yeah, you know, and that's that's a fair point. It's the jungle or WWE or come yeah. dancing or one of them. So yeah, yeah so, and it. look, you know he he's obviously got to take a bit of time out with the eye injury. So why not go and build your profile? He's already bigger than Wilder in America. He's mm. going to be even bigger. So great for him. Yeah, he's made for it though, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, you know, it's like it's like you're like when he speaks, it's like you're watching the WWE anyway. He'll be in there coaching them on how to perform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's done great so far in terms of like it's you know. It's always been like that. Yeah. Though. I, I Kev, you were there the night in City West, the Willie Casey and Rigondo fight. I was. Yeah. And we were covering the fight for News Talk. Willie Casey wasn't meant to lose in the first round, so we needed to fill airtime. Tyson Fury happened to be there because he was at the the Ireland England rugby match, and he came in mm-hmm. and. Not only could he fill time, he was box office. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's always been brilliant when you put a camera or a microphone in front of him. He can speak. He can for sing a long as well. Time. He can sing well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get Paddy to sing. I told Paddy he should sing a song there. Yeah, yeah. Fell down time. Yeah. I'm disappointed that Tyson Fury didn't get called in for Celebrity X Factor. Oh, See, yeah, Carl Frampton yeah, yeah. apparently was. You heard, heard his edition. Yeah, it wasn't bad, was it? Better than I thought it would be. Yeah, he can sing. He can sing, yeah. yeah. That's, Who do you think that's content you'd like, Andy. Who do you think wins uh, the light heavyweight fight? <laughs> I thought you were going to say the celebrity X Factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. The light heavyweight fight is as huge this weekend. Yeah, Paterbiev, the nail. That's the best way to say because I can't pronounce yeah. his last name. Vazcek. Vazcek? Yeah, it's Teddy Atlas's boy, yeah. Yeah, and it's an interesting mix. Because um, you saw what he did to Adonis Stevenson, you would have trained with him yeah. back in the past. That fight, like, that yeah. fight was in the balance mm. up yeah. until the end. I think you know that fight was in the balance. Um, but yeah, very well schooled as you'd expect. Ukrainian national team member from the same school as Yusek and Lomachenko. Um, but I don't know if he's adapted as much to the pros as them. But he's still very much an amateur. But being at the light heavyweights, like with Bivald, you can kind of see that amateur style. Kind of mm. works. Um, better be of, better be of, how do you say? How better be of, better be of, yeah. Better be of, yeah. He's a different animal, like, he's, he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a beast, like, isn't he? You know, he's yeah. aggressive, he's strong, but he can be hurt too. Callum Johnson put him down. Yeah. So, it will be, it could be a thriller, if I could be fighting a year, you know, yeah. it has the makings of it. Philadelphia um, as well, like a city made, yeah. for, the, made for the light heavyweight um, showdown duel. Yeah. But I'm interested to see Tally Atlas in the corner. I always watch him with interest. You learn a few things, Andy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fireman. Yeah. He'll get the photographs out. I'm going to yeah. go for Gazodzic anyway. I think he'll edge. You reckon? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, but I was reading some of the quotes from his, um, from Better Be coach, assistant coach, John Scully. Yeah. You might know him. Um, he 
he was saying we can't let this guy box we're going to have to fight so in, in, if that's the plan then it's going to be an interesting mix and he's a big puncher so yeah you, you might the nail might get it but yeah. it, it should, should be, be a war should be a good mix yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely lads an absolute pleasure got Cheers. through a fair bit probably yeah, quick loads more we could have got through but yeah. no doubt we will be back with another episode of Off the Brawl very soon thanks for listening take care